Today I want to show you how to create fan pages and talk about the benefits of fan pages to you. So the first thing that I think I want to show you how to do is where to find the links to get to a fan page and also how to uh, create one. Um, I also want to talk about the benefits. So <clears throat> if you're on your regular um, Facebook page that happens to not be your feed, uh, what you do is you go into the upper right hand corner and this downward facing uh, triangle, if you click on it, it'll show you a couple of things. First of all, at the top of it, and you won't have this yet if you haven't created a fan page, my two fan pages are Homoerotic Art and Kenny Mencher. Underneath that is Create Pages, and underneath that is Manage Pages. It also allows you to create groups from there, and what your new groups are, create ads and manage ads. So I s suppose that you're already getting the impression I hope, that there are some things that you can do with these advertisements and with the groups and with the pages that you can't do with just your regular Facebook page. Now another way to find a place to create pages and groups is if you were to click on the home link that's also in the top masthead, and you scroll down a little bit and look in the left hand column, you'll see that you can create pages here, create ads here, and you can also create groups, and you can also manage your groups and look at your favorite groups and scroll down to the groups. So that's what we went over in an earlier video. Now the next thing that I'd like to do is to um, go to my fan page and explain what some of the benefits of the fan page are. So I'm going to go to the first one, which is KennyMencher.com, or Kenny Mencher the Artist. So a couple of the benefits, um, we'll start in the upper right hand corner, are in this box that has promote underneath it. The nice thing about this is it shows you a couple of stats or numbers that allow you to see where you are and, and what, um, how you're doing with your fan page. And the first thing is it gives you the post reach and tells you how many people have been reached by the posts that you have. It also gives you the engagement, which I think means how many people have clicked on the link and looked at the things, okay? And underneath that is the response rate, uh, which is basically how quickly you respond to people's comments and how quickly you respond to emails. And, and that's okay. Um, you don't, you know, they're trying to push you to be on Facebook all the time. So in a way, this is an advertisement to Facebook to get you to work on it more and work on your fan page and keep being obsessed with it. So don't worry about that response time thing. I think it'll just drive you crazy, okay? The other thing is you'll get separate messages <coughs> in your um, on your fan page than you will from your regular page. So you're going to need to regularly go into, once you're in your fan page mode, click on the message mode. Now a couple of benefits to, uh, to having a fan page are first of all that you can run advertisements, which means you can boost your posts. And what that literally means is that you have to have a PayPal account. And what I usually do is I, if I'm going to boost a post, and I'm going to show you this with the more advanced stuff, I create a targeted audience. In this case for me, it's gay men. Uh, above a certain age, I think I, I made the cutoff age around 30 or 35 to about 60 years old. And um, I also s programmed in the, in the countries and so on and so forth. And usually what I do is I pay about five bucks and I schedule it for a dollar a day so that it just keeps reposting the thing and sending out to people that we don't know. So that's another benefit is that with your fan page, a post that you can put on your fan page will reach other people not necessarily just your friends, and you can also target your audiences. So that's a very important thing. The other benefit to a fan page <coughs> is that you can schedule posts, and scheduling the posts means that you can schedule, like let's say you wanna go away on vacation or you don't wanna think about this for a month or two and you've got 30 or 40 paintings that are in your Etsy shop, you can schedule them in advance. So I have 43 uh, posts scheduled. Um, when I first uh, looked at this to do a draft of this video, I had a lot more and um, a nice thing was most of those videos, had, uh, most of those um, paintings had sold. So what I had to do was go back in and delete a whole bunch of them, and I haven't deleted all of them, but <clears throat> what I want to show you is that I have 43 posts scheduled to go out in the next uh, couple of months. 
What I tried to do was any of the paintings that I posted or the greeting cards that I've posted would be scheduled out so that every couple of days something would happen even if I didn't, wasn't able to get on Facebook and I was busy with work and that kind of thing. The other thing that I thought of was I had some paintings that were on here that um, were wet and I needed two or three weeks for them to dry. And uh, it, it's kind of an interesting thing because I posted them to Etsy and then unfortunately or fortunately they sold. And so now I have to go back through, like for example, this painting here has already been sold to a client. And so what I need to do is actually get rid of it. Um, and so the way that, that you get rid of it is to delete it. And then it just removes it from your feed. Now, you can see in the right-hand column that I have its thing scheduled to go out all the way to October 15th. And I'm going to have to go back through here because some of the paintings are, are still already sold. But the other thing in addition to that is you can schedule it and you can put a boost on a post. So those are some important things. Um, so this, since this is a basic video, I'll show you in a more advanced video later how to boost the post and what to think about when you're doing a post and that kind of thing. But let's take a look at my sort of thesis or main idea for creating my fan page <clears throat> and then look at another one because I think that's kind of important because um, like groups and this is going to also apply to the groups that you that you make you have to think about a main idea for the group and you have to think about who the audience is that you're trying to reach and how you're reaching them and, and the identity that you're portraying on the page so in this instance, my fan page, what I decided to do was it's strictly all about me. And what I uh, have been doing is just putting uh, a work of art up every once in a while and a link directly to that work of art. And every day I check in and I see if anybody's complimented me or that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, and I look at the stats every day to see what's going on. And then I see... Um, what people are saying about the work. So for instance, with Clay commenting on things, I'm gonna have to come back to that and say something uh, nice back to him for giving me that compliment. 21 people have already looked at this, so this is a very nice thing. Um, the other thing that I do sometimes on my fan page, and I'm not sure how successful it really is because I've noticed that people are more engaged with, uh, with sort of esoteric or educational and informational things on my regular page and in the groups. But so what I also try to do is at least put in 50% of sort of informational kinds of things and also sort of instructive or uh, another word for that is didactic where I show people how I've developed my painting and how I'm working on it. So I try to sort of be um, a little bit educational on it uh, and I also uh, share other people's work on my fan page. Uh, you know, there aren't, there isn't that much this time, but a lot of times what I try to do is share some of the same things that I would share on my regular page, on my fan page, so that people get a sense of who I am and what projects I'm working on and what I'm interested in. So it's not just about giving a shout out about my work, but I have to say that it seems like people respond more to just my work on the fan page, which is a little bit different than what I've been telling you before about what to look up and, and how to behave on, on uh, Facebook. It seems like it might be a little bit better to do a higher proportion of advertisements about yourself because people are looking for those kinds of things on your fan page. Now here's a really interesting thing to do. Um, I'm gonna show you another fan page that I've created and it's basically a page and it's kind of like a group but it's not a group it's it's actually a managed page that's meant that the only person who can post content on it is me unless I share the administration for that so if you go into the upper right hand corner and you were to click on your down arrow if you've already created a page and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit and you click on homoerotic art which is my page. What I decided to do was I thought that there were lots of pages for people who were 
it was all about them and all about their stuff. But one of the things that I noticed when I had group shows in galleries was there was a cross-fertilization or a, or a generalized interest. When I was in a show with other people, I got the benefit of seeing those other people's um, fans, and they also got the benefit of seeing mine. And so it was a sort of win-win situation having a group show. And I thought, how does that apply to um, selling stuff on the internet? And what I thought was, oh, if I make a page about homoerotic art, paintings that are kind of the paintings that I make. So if you make animal art, you might want to make an animal art page, not just a group, okay? Because I do have a homoerotic imagery group that I also have. And this group, what I have, you can see the post reach is very good. Um, a lot of people and the benefits of this is that I scheduled posts out and those those do very well but I also have um, shared the admi administration of this page with some other people and what I try to do on this page instead of just me uh, showing my own work what I do is I post other people's work regularly and schedule it regularly with the same kinds of things that so if you're doing a blog post about for instance this artist Julian Jung you might want to also schedule a post with the same text and with the same images on Facebook on the fan page that you have so that you can share those things out and what happens is people don't think that it's all about you they also see other artists work like for example I've mentioned this guy a couple of times Brendan Sanborn and he is a very good artist and so one of the things about this page is that I've been allowing uh, other people to be administrators on the page so that they will put things up. And it's kind of um, a, a cooperative or communi community effort, almost like having a community gallery. So a couple of my um, clients, uh, collectors, I've, I've asked them to be administrators. So there's a way of doing that. And I think, <laughs> I haven't rehearsed this, so let's see if I can remember how to do it. If you go to settings, click on settings in the upper right hand corner, and it'll bring you to this page. In the left hand roll, there are page rolls. And what you can do is click on that. And you can see that what I've done is I've included a couple of other people who are friends of mine who are good artists or good art collectors. And I've asked them to be one of the editors of the page. So that means if you have someone that you trust who collects art and has a similar taste to yours, after a while, if you developed an online relationship with them, what you can do is you can add them as an administrator for the page, and they will post things regularly, and it'll take some of the burden off of you to do that. So in short, one of the things about these fan pages is that they're similar to groups, but they're a little bit more controllable in terms of what you send out. You can advertise with them, and you can schedule things out. And those are some of the benefits. Now, I will probably come up with more fan pages and more sort of community-oriented things as soon as I, um, as soon as I figure out if I'm going to sell other kinds of work. And so, really, maybe even sit down and write a list of descriptive adjectives about what your page is supposed to be about, and use at least two of those to describe what the page is going to be called. Okay, now. The other thing is, when I made this fan page, and this is a sort of a cross discussion relating to the last video, is that I also made a public group called Homoerotic Imagery. And this um, page, Homoerotic Imagery, it's a little bit more open. I do have the rules posted at the top, okay? And, but a lot of my collectors and clients and friends share work regularly on in this group and it it's a very very active place so you might want to consider also at the same time that you're making a fan page make a group page with the same thesis and the same idea and one of the nice things about that is that you can share the same thing in both of those groups it's not like people are looking at you and seeing if you're if you're sharing stuff too much uh, or cross-sharing too much because not everybody's going to be on at the same time and it's almost like a newspaper where it becomes it, it expires so quickly that people won't see it the next day and you could even schedule it so that one day you do one post and one day you do it on the on the um, 
on the group page. So those are some of the benefits and some of the uh, negative, well, I haven't given you any of the negatives because I don't think there are any, but this is the kind of stuff that I uh, would like you to think about is creating fan pages and groups. And in the next couple of videos, what I'll try to do is I will give you a little bit more in-depth um, technical knowledge about how to uh, work your group out a little bit, what kinds of things to share, and also the same thing with the fan pages and how to, uh, how to work those kinds of things.